Thanks for the uh, panel for giving me present this case uh, today. The reason I chose this case is uh, uh, for two reasons. Number one, I uh, took care of this patient for a month, and he was uh, so sick that at some point we thought he was going to die, but he didn't. So, um, so um, he's a 64-year-old male with history of diabetes, uh, COPD with long smoking history. Two months of, uh, uh, prior to the presentation, he had uh, class 2 to 3 angina with a positive uh, stress test, but he was offered coronary angiogram at Southside Hospital, and he, uh, he, he was reluctant to do the angiogram. And two months after this, he came to uh, our emergency department with uh, acute chest pain, uh, nausea, vomiting, shortness of breath, and his troponin was more than 50. Uh, CKMP was more than 300, and uh, sugar was for more than 100. Uh, his blood pressure was 95 or 60, heart rate 100, and uh, he was in acute respiratory distress requiring BiPAP. Uh, so an AKG showed um, a ST elevation in the uh, anteroceptal uh, uh, leads. Um, so he deemed to have a STEMI, took him to the cath lab immediately. And um, he was basically encouraging shock. So uh, there was, as you see in the angiogram, there is a um, lesion on the uh, middle AD uh, with another view. Uh, with a, uh, as you see, there is a, almost a plaque rupture on the uh, uh, middle AD. So we went ahead and uh, ballooned it with a 2 by 20 uh, emerged balloon and uh, Stented with the uh, 3 by 28 uh, Promus Premier uh, drug looting stent. And uh, this is the uh, final picture. Uh, after the intervention, he was in cardiac shock and uh, uh, he was in multiple pressures during the PCI. So we felt that he needed uh, some sort of support. Uh, so we put an Impella in, uh, Impella CP uh, for hemodynamic support, and he was taken to the uh, CCU. At this point, we didn't know that he has severe aortic stenosis uh, because he has no history. And uh, we, when we tried to put the impella, there was some uh, difficulty uh, passing the wire. But uh, finally, we put the impella in. Uh, this is the uh, uh, post impella uh, CP, the echo, as you see. Uh, we saw that the uh, valve is too calcified and heavily calcified. And, and uh, it looks there is aortic stenosis. but. As we know, we cannot assess the severity at, at this time because there's an ampulla across the valve. So uh, next day, the uh, ampulla was uh, explanted. And we, uh, we were able to assess his, uh, his aortic stenosis uh, more accurately. As you see, uh, if I go back one slide, his LV was very, uh, very poorly contracting. His um, EF was around 20%. Um, so as you can see here, the, uh, he has uh, uh, a trans aortic gradient of um, uh, a mean gradient of uh, at least 40, and uh, uh, with poor LV, normally you expect when you have poor LV function, you, you cannot create such gradient, but uh, this indicates that he has true severe aortic stenosis with, with poor LV function. Um, another uh, echo measurements for his uh, aortic uh, stenosis. And uh, his, his area is uh, 0 0.6 uh, square centimeter by echo. Um, you know, someone asked why you had, uh, how you had put an impella in this critical aortic stenosis. As, as we know, the, uh, the um, least number of uh, valve area that you can pass impella is 0 0.4. Uh, and we had some cases that we did an impella assisted uh, a PAV, but not, of course, not TAVR. So um, at this point, there's another, another uh, TE short axis view showing that he has a critical aortic stenosis. Uh, so at this point, we felt that uh, he was too sick and he didn't recover, so we decided to, uh, to do uh, uh, balloon valvoblasty as a stage procedure and to see if, if he can uh, uh, recover uh, so we can go ahead with the next step with the, with the um, uh, surgical replacement or, or TAVR. Uh, so we decided to go for, um, for um, uh, PAV at this point. So as, uh, as you know, he, has, he was in cardiac shock and his um, LV was poor, so we decided to use um, uh, hemodynamic support with the uh, tandem device. Uh, as you can see, the right femoral angiogram was deemed accessible, um, 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 suitable for femoral axis. Uh, so we did the, as you, see, can, you can see, the impella device is across the uh, transeptum and the, uh, and the uh, left atrium. And um, uh, we used uh, uh, true balloon for the uh, for the PAV, uh, PAV, and 
he was taken back to the, uh, to the um, ICU, who was intubated in pressers. Um, And this is the echo showing the uh, impeller device across the uh, transeptum to the uh, left atrium. Um, next day, he had um, a cardiac arrest times two after the PAV. And uh, luckily, we got him back twice. And um, um, uh, we, he, was, he was in maximum pressure. So we, uh, we were thinking. Uh, we need to have a definitive therapy. He was uh, completely revascularized in terms of his coronary artery disease, and um, uh, we felt that his uh, main problem now is the obstruction in the aortic valve that causing his uh, severe cardiac shock and uh, uh, cardiomyopathy. Uh, so it was, um, uh, uh, of course, he was a very high surgical risk for, for uh, aortic valve replacement, so we decided to go ahead, and, and he was young, young he's 60, 64. Uh, of course, in the Taver era, uh, elderly is above 100, so we thought that he uh, uh, will benefit from, might benefit from, from Taver. So we uh, decided to go for uh, Taver, and we decided to use, again, Tandem Heart for support. Uh, we went ahead, and uh, uh, his, uh, his aortic aneurysm was uh, uh, measured, and uh, we decided to put a 29 uh, millimeter uh, self-expandable uh, core valve, uh, as you see the tandem heart support uh, uh, across the valve. This is the initial uh, deployment. This is the uh, final deployment and release of the uh, uh, self-expandable valve. And this is the uh, final aortic angiogram with some AI, but not, uh, it's mild AI. So to summarize the case, he was admitted with acute coronary syndrome, anterior STEMI, and cardiogenic shock, went to the cath lab and had the primary PCI with the Impella CP afterward for hemodynamic support. He remained intubated and uh, sedated. EF was 20% cardiogenic shock. On day 10, he didn't improve. He had uh, cardiac arrest times two with uh, critical aortic stenosis. On day 11, we did PAV with tandem heart support. And again, he was in shock and multi-organ failure. So uh, we decided to go ahead and fix his valve with the, on day uh, 18 with a transfemoral uh, uh, core valve uh, with a 29 millimeter Medtronic core valve with the tandem heart support again. Uh, he made a uh, very um, impressive recovery. He uh, was discharged uh, to car cardiac rehab uh, one week later. Um, follow up two months later, uh, I think in March 2015, uh, he came back to the emergency department with the uh, uh, shortness of breath and chest pain. And based on his uh, uh, high risk clinical profile, we decided to take him to the cath lab again and study uh, his coronaries and see what happened to the stent, to the valve, LV function. Um, so we did a coronary angiogram uh, two months later. And you know, some of my colleagues ask me all the time, how you guys can, can relate the coronary arteries uh, after the TAVR? And uh, uh, we've seen a case with Edward Valve earlier today. Uh, uh, so we got, went ahead and uh, did shoot the um, orthogram. As you can see here, there's mildly, I actually better than the uh, uh, one that got two months ago after deployment. And this in, uh, indicates that the core valve keep expanding with time. Uh, we did the selective coronary angiogram. As you can see, the uh, stent uh, is patent. Um, for the lift system. Uh, it's my first time to relate coronary, coronary arteries after a TAVR. So uh, this is the lift system. This is the, uh, we did the, we crossed the valve and shoot the LV. His LV is around 30%, uh, so it's, it's getting better. And we uh, did the right side. Again, has no, no lesion. Uh, so quickly, tandem support is a continuous flow device to remove oxygenated blood from the left atrium by a transeptal approach to the uh, uh, place in the, in the femoral vein, return blood to the, uh, via femoral artery. It has been shown to reduce uh, LA pressure, uh, wedge pressure, reduce myocardial oxygen uh, demand, and increase um, uh, uh, MAP and uh, cardiac output. Uh, access to the LA via standard transeptal technique, catheter exchange made uh, via Amplatz wire. 
uh, delayed the septum with a, a two-stage 14 and 21 French uh, dilator and placed the cannula in the left atrium. Uh, according to published literature, there is uh, experience with tandem heart support uh, and surgical valve replacement and uh, PAV, uh, but nothing has been published for, for TAVR. So uh, this paper came from our hospital nine years ago. They did nine, uh, 10 cases of tandem support, surgical uh, valve replacement, but uh, this is the first case uh, we report with the, with the tandem uh, support TAVR. Uh, take home message from this case, tandem heart support can, uh, may, may provide a valuable safeguard during the high-risk TAVI procedures and enables precise delivery of the valve. Um, it can be a good option uh, for elective TAVI cases in patients with severe aortic stenosis and poor cardiac reserve. Or uh, it can be also good in those who have cardiogenic shock that requires more urgent valve replacement like uh, our patients. Thank you.